Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about problem solving skills. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I'm looking to become a programmer. What is the best way for me to practice my problem solving skills? Solve problems would be my, my answer. Uh, so I get a few of these questions, which I feel is, I understand them, it's just a little bit odd, if that makes sense, um, why the question reoccurs, I get uh, things like, uh, how do I just practice general problem solving skills, how do I practice, uh, what other things can I practice to be better at coding, etc, etc, and I keep telling people, just go and do the damn coding. <laughs> do the coding, that is what's gonna get you good at coding. As my old martial arts teacher used to say, if you want to be good at walking, walk, if you want to be good at running, run. If you want to be good at swimming, swim. Don't try to mix them to be good at one or the other. The folk, I mean, there are absolutely things that you can use to complement certain strengths in like a sport or something like that. But I mean, guys, the world's best hockey players and football players, they play football and hockey. They don't go and play golf uh, to get good at hockey and football. So it's the same deal here for us software developers. So the best tip I can give is really to do uh, do tinkering. Tinker, tinker, tinker. That is the thing. Like personal projects, tinker around and play around with different uh, coding concepts. I like to do uh, a lot of that stuff. Um, you play around with uh, some idea you have, you want to build something or so forth, and then you try it, and you need to like research a bit and so forth, and you realize that, oh, this was either very fun or very boring, or it's very complicated, etc, etc, you're gonna you're gonna learn some stuff, because that's the that's the way that you learn. You set a task in front of you that you're going to achieve, and then you start moving towards that task, and in order to reach it, you're very often going to have to grow as a person, and it can be anything from, you know, starting a business to making an app, or, I mean, just learning how to do the laundry doesn't really matter. In order to achieve the goal, you are going to have to go out, find information, etc, etc, in order to know, uh, learn what is necessary to, to reach that goal. And for programmers, most of what we do is, well, it is problem solving, but it is through a computer. So you need to have a lot of different types of problems. Now the issue is that a software developer, depending on the role that they have, might find themselves just working on one type of problem and so it becomes very difficult for you unless you switch jobs to face off against problems that are stimulating or interesting or will grow you as a person. I've been here many times, uh, I'm here right now actually, uh, currently where I have a side project where the goal and intent is for it to teach me things that I would not be able to learn through work simply because at work we don't do that sort of stuff and it's the same thing for software developers when they're juniors where the you will learn some stuff in school guys but I tell especially to the people who work who go like and learn die hard computer science stuff I usually tell them that it's better for you to not get too far into the academics because if you think about it that's just half of the problem as I like to say to people the theory is just studying to do the real thing is preparation to do the real thing and doing is the thing that you are looking to usually at the very least is it's the thing that matters and you need the theory in order to be able to do things but once you have, and ideally this is what you should be doing, once you have learned something in class or in school or something like that, uh, you should, as soon as you're done, don't look at your next free, uh, your, your free time as just free time unless you really need to take that free time. Go and pull out your computer, sit down at your text editor or, um, uh, or ID or whatever you're using, right, and practice building things. 
because that is the thing that's going to get you work. That I can promise you. Your theory, your understanding of concepts and stuff like that is not in any way going to help if you want to do professional grade software development as a job because the people that do this and pay people to do it they don't care about your theory they care about what you can produce and that's why the tinkering is so important so don't you know this problem solving skills I mean I can sit there and say oh yeah you should play chess you should play Sudo you know do Sudoku's or or do math like all of this stuff is sort of relevant but it is similar to saying that you know in order to be a perfect human being you just have to know everything that is complicated in the world and that's how you prepare to do you know to to fix your problem solving skills and it's that's just not productive so what I want you to take away from this is that problem solving skills it's very simple just throw away the concept of doing something that is not coding related unless you are already a very sophisticated very good software developer before you have the actual uh, hands-on skills to do all the things that you need in order to be a software developer it's actually not as useful as you might think to know about very in-depth you know complicated theoretical problem solving skills because you haven't even learned the basics it's sort of in a, in a way I think it's fair to say that it's uh, it's like learning how to ride a bicycle where in the beginning you sort of learn a little bit about how a bicycle works in order to understand what you're supposed to do when you get on it and then you get on it and then you fall over and you fall over and you fall over and sooner or later you're going to learn how to ride it sort of and then you have to ride it for quite some time until you get so good that you need to take courses on advanced bicycle you know advanced cycling and like maybe you want to compete and like it gets to the next level and then the theory comes back again and it's like it's almost like a sandwich type of thing you know you start with some theory a lot of meat which is like the doing and then more theory at the end so you can like uh, be better at the actual doing of the thing that is what I truly believe and that's why I tell people tinker tinkering is the best way for you to get to where you need to be it's actually a lot of the time you will see people favor candidates or people like if for hiring junior developers they will favor people who tinker over people who just went to school I promise you basically all the time because both are necessary to produce software when you're at the skill level where you're so good at this thing where you're like a mid-level or a senior level developer then you can go back and take or that then you know the the answer be, becomes a little bit different for me as an example sometimes I find that it's really difficult for me to find like a a simple quote-unquote problem to solve that is stimulating to me so a lot of the more higher concepts like I mean say as an example take graph theory or something or category theory or so forth these sorts of um, more abstract concepts they may not be something that I use on a regular basis in my job but I find them interesting and they help me you know, think about very specific types of problems that I have in my personal projects and these are once again they're tinkering problems in some places of work that's going to be very relevant or machine learning for example maybe you never never worked with machine learning maybe you're never gonna learn about machine learning but that doesn't matter if you're just doing it to further your own understanding of the concept but you first and foremost should, fo should focus on getting hands-on skills because that is what's gonna pay the bills I promise you that have a great day.